So move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Our next item is a public hearing on the LSI proposal for enhanced hours. And I'm going to first ask Kim and uh, Dana to talk a little <laughs> Hi, Dana. <laughs> and to talk a little bit about what the proposal is. And I know they have one small change they want to talk about as well. So Kim, will you talk a little bit? Give the, the background of what this proposal is about. So the, the board asked staff to come up with two proposals. One was a $500,000 proposal that we brought forward. And then um, they asked for another proposal that we brought forward at the study session on the 22nd. This proposal was for um, enhanced hours, but very minimal enhanced hours. They're 58 hours across the county. What we tried to do is use circulation and um, just try to balance out the number of hours that we have throughout the county now. So for example, we brought, in this proposal, we brought Medford up to 40 hours, Central Point up to 36 hours, Eagle Point up to 28 hours, and then Jacksonville, Phoenix, and White City or Jacksonville and Phoenix up to 22 hours. White City's already at 22 hours. Ruth, Shady Cove, Gold Hill, and Applegate to 18 hours. Prospect, we added four to bring it up to 12, and then Butte Falls, two hours to bring it up to 10 hours. Those are very minimal adjustments. We tried to balance out across the county. And um, this is based on what we've heard for the last seven years since we reopened it at minimal hours that the public, our friends groups, our staff, wanted additional hours. Um, so that was the proposal it, that we brought forward at the study session. The amount was $284,310. Um, since this, because of some things that were said at the study session, Dana and I did look at the proposal again and we um, have a minor shift that we thought we could we would propose to you and I have that here so after reviewing it again with um, some of the feedback that we heard we thought that it really made more sense to shift instead of giving Applegate six hours to give them four hours and to shift those two hours from Applegate to Jacksonville, which is a busier library. That brings the number of hours in Applegate to 16 and in Jacksonville to 24. It changes the amount of the proposal, $461 to $284,771. It's a minor adjustment and um, it's just a revised proposal if you're interested in that provision. Dana, did you have anything else to add? No, I, I, like I said, I think just to have a, a different option there as well. And so what I think is right now is that's what we're discussing. So what I think now is we need to take public input about uh, the, this proposal that's before us. And I would suggest that um, you need to make sure you sign in and uh, come to the front here and sit down so that we can see who you are and you'll have a place to rest if you have your materials to read from. And um, we'd like to try this format of having the, the table in front for us. Do you want Okay. Here? Right here. Oh, here? Right here. Yeah. Do you want me to go first? Are you Betty Cassie? All right, I'll go first and I'll be brief. This has to do with how the hours are allocated. Okay. Uh, I was here at the meeting last month when you uh, talked about working families needing more library hours and suggested adding evening hours in order to facilitate that. Well, I represent working families some time ago 
For 23 years, I was a graduate student and or full-time secondary school teacher while raising three children and running a household which I think qualifies as a working family mom. The dad worked even longer hours than I did. Okay, working families' evening hours are crammed with school activities, homework, housework, meals, laundry, doctor's appointments, all kinds of demands. Working families, I would respectfully suggest, need weekend hours to visit the libraries. This Medford Library, which I and my husband support strongly, is only open four hours on the weekend, and that's from noon to four on Saturday. And I respectfully suggest that it be open at 10 a.m. and stay open until at least 5 p.m. to accommodate all the members of this community who are working families, and even those of us who have retired and aren't working anymore. And that's my comment. Could she identify herself again? There was a lot My of name is Betty. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm Kasman. Kasman. Um, <laughs> you may you. see my name now and then. I write up ed sometimes in the Mail Tribune on education issues. I'm an old Board of Education member in a small town in Ohio. I taught school for 20 years in Los Angeles, raising three children, and I feel qualified to comment on working families. Thank you, Betty. Thank you. And we love our library. And villagers. My name is Ann Billiter. I live in a county southwest of Medford. I have a Medford address, but I'm a county resident. And thank you for holding this public hearing today. I'm currently president of the Friends of the Phoenix Library after serving as their treasurer for five years. But I was mid manager at the Jackson County Library for 22 years, from July 1st of 1985 to April 13th of 2007. In my various roles as head of reference services, as collection development manager, as manager of children's services, all of which were system-wide responsibilities, and as manager of the South Region, which was Ashland, Phoenix, and Cowan, I developed a real appreciation for the strength of the commitment of each community, of the staff, of the patrons, of the Friends of the Libraries, of each of the 15 communities to equal library services for all residents of Jackson County, regardless of where the people live. The Jackson County Library staff worked really hard to develop system-wide services with that goal in mind. The vote that created the library district was a healthy majority. Those who voted yes live in every community in Jackson County. They voted for permanent stable funding, and they voted to provide for enhanced library services and hours. They were not satisfied with reduced services and hours provided by the Jackson County government or with the uncertainties of the budget. Those communities with the resources to enhance their library's hours between 2007 and today voted yes. Their enhanced hours, with the exception of Ashland, are still fewer than they had before we closed in 2007. The branches the communities without the resources to enhance their hours voted yes. They desperately need increased hours. Many find it difficult or impossible to get to their local library during the present slim hours. Every yes vote was a vote for stability and for enhanced services. Please don't make any of us wait wherever we live for those enhancements to begin. January of 2015, it's almost eight years since most of the libraries have had adequate hours. The present LSSI proposal provides for only a modest increase <coughs> of hours for many of the communities. We all applaud the awareness that Medford and Central Point have larger populations with inadequate library hours, but all of the other branches of <coughs> library patrons who also deserve those enhanced hours and equal services now, not some date in the future. So I would hope that you would implement the full proposal for all of the branches as soon as it's feasible to do so, which I think that you're aiming at January 1st. Thank you. <laughs> do we have anyone else that would like to talk to us about our proposal to increase hours? If you would come forward and sign in. 
And you put some sun in there, right? Marsha, Marsha, Thank you. I'm from Medford. Okay, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> I've talked with, my husband and I have talked with a lot of people, and they feel that um, since we have this district, we should have um, <clears throat> a lot more hours, and that's what we voted for, all the communities. And uh, it seems only fair and equitable that the largest population should get large hours in that um, <clears throat> and it has never really been told us why um, uh, Ashley has received the full hours it's never been it's the question's been asked many times and uh, we've never got got this asked after the answer so I, I have a question on that <coughs> um, I just feel it's equitable and fair <clears throat> That, uh, that all the libraries should get extended hours, but that the largest population should get the most out uh, the most hours. Thank you. We have anyone else here that would like to speak about this proposal? I would like to um, have maybe read into the record that we received a proposal in the mail from uh, Wright Kiernan, I think you could hear it. And he's a gentleman who has been attending and his comments, and so I guess I'll just read into the record or do you guys feel like that it's, what's the proper thing to do here? You don't need to read it. It's been given to everybody and it's at the back. And just briefly, the comments by him is that I'll just read what he underlined so that it's there. Hours at libraries that are near each other should be coordinated to avoid duplication. Hours should be provided at libraries that enable people who work during the day, that is people who work to pay the taxes that actually pay for the library's operation, libraries themselves. A balanced portion of the library's public board's public meetings should be held in the evening to allow other people to participate. Therefore, uh, Medford has the best facility and he thinks they should be heavily biased towards Medford. The dollars to support library operations are scarce. He, he thinks that we should go back to the very beginning and design from first principles and not be designed to achieve a predetermined result. Um, the hours provided at, at, to each branch going forward should be based on cost-effective benefit analysis, but merely unquestioning continuation of tax allocations. And he provided an analytical uh, spreadsheet, and I think that's in, in the back that people can look at. So uh, then he made a, a, a proposal to us, and, and his proposal, I think, was still the same number of hours, but he moved them and decreased some places and increased other places across the board. And so that was the proposal that he put together. Um, so that's uh, so. Are there any other particular comments or questions that need to be noted in the agenda at this time? So if not, then I think we're. Oh, yeah, another uh, yes, Monica. It's not a comment, but do we have the printout here of this? Yes. I'm trying to find it. Oh, it's the very last of your packets. There are some over here. Yeah. Here it is. It looks like this. Thanks. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. Okay. So do we want to have more? Dis let's have board discussion then. If the public input is uh, complete, let's have slide. Um, and should we first talk about whether we like the October 2nd revised option number two better than revised option, which was moving the hours from Applegate to Jacksonville? Oh, 
Okay. And we want to know that the hours are correct, but the circulation and population, again, are mixed up on this revised option number two. Just mark it out. So it, it's not accurate for the determination of numbers for right there. It appears that oh, the price. Sorry, guys. I think that was me. I had the old, old template. So if you just take the dollar amount an hour, I my apologies on that. I think I must have copied it over, but it's the um, hours and the dollar amounts are correct. But if you use a revised one, those are the, all the circulation and population figures. Right. So what we're saying on this October 2nd, 2014, LSSI price, price, price proposal revised option number two, we need to really disregard population and circulation numbers on those because they're not lining up with the correct uh, library branch. But the pricing unit on the four hour block, the current hours, the proposed additional hours, and the total new hours, and the additional costs for doing so are correct mathematically. That's what you're saying, correct? Correct, yes, thank you. Okay, so does anyone want to speak about the October 2nd proposal versus the other proposal on September 22nd? And uh, uh, Officer Doty. Could I just comment briefly on Mr. Karen's uh, letter? Because I thought it was well done, but I felt it was really appropriate for Kim to be addressing this with the strategic plan, and I realized then she didn't even get a copy until this morning. So, um, but I was very appreciative of his suggestions, and, and I think, though, that they really need to be fed into the new strategic plan as much as possible. And so I was. I just wanted to put that in the record, though, as something that I thought was important. Officer Wavy, Director Wavy, is is the the question is whether we want to accept the revised yes mm -hmm. October second over September twenty second recommendation. Not whether we're voting on the dollar amount, but whether we want to accept the revised proposal. Right. And. Um, I move that we do, it's minus two hours in Applegate, plus two hours in Jacksonville, for reasons stated by the professionals, based upon all of their experience with these two libraries and input over the last several years. So it's uh, almost a net zero effect, and I buy the logic. Okay, so let's not then spend any time talking about September 22nd, and it's agreed that we'll spend our time looking at the October 2nd proposal then. Is that mm -hmm. agreed? Okay, I don't think we need a motion. I just think we need to, just to make it clear that we like the additional amendment that you made. Thank you. And also request that the <clears throat> template be revised to get us the accurate one. Yeah. It, for our records. Yes, yes please. Okay, it, are there any more particular comments and questions about this proposal uh, and what our intent is with this proposal or someone like this piece? Do you have any comments, Susan? Um, not very significant, really. I, uh, I also was pretty favorably impressed with Ray Kieran's proposal. Um, However, I also think that we should perhaps wait and look at that more seriously as we're, I mean, we've already committed to going back and kind of looking at things for, from scratch for the, next, for the upcoming fiscal year. So I think I would be in favor of implementing the October 2nd proposal now and uh, considering Mr. Kieran's proposal much more carefully as we look at oh, as we all look, as we look at the from scratch um, idea for the next fiscal year. But I, I think I'm pretty much in favor of this October 2nd proposal and the increased hours would be a good first step. Dodie. Could I ask uh, the library a question uh, related to 
some of the comments that were made this morning. Um, do you um, see these hours um, adding to weekends, for example? Possibly in some libraries, yes. Okay, so that would be cared for in terms of their concerns? Yes, we will, add, I'm, I'm sure we will add some weekend hours, we would like to add another Sunday. We haven't determined exactly what the hours will be at each branch yet. Okay. Um, the other comment that was made was, if you're close to, uh, let's say, Rogue River and Gold Hill are close to each other, that if one had a Saturday hour, another one would Right. Or one half evening hours, the other one one. That mm -hmm. there would be some coordinating on schedules in whatever areas. Can you speak to that? Correct. Yes. Okay. We will do that. Okay. Monica? And, and just for the record, I, mean, <clears throat> I know that um, in some cases, the reason that hours look similar in libraries that are close to each other is due to staffing issues. So one staff member may have to work two libraries or it, it may be due to the, the four hour time block or the question of benefits. So it's, it's not as simple as just dividing the hours across the board on the face of it. Right, we'll, we'll work with the staff and try to come up with the best possible option for the branches and regionally. So we'll do our best to, we, I don't think we can accommodate all the needs right now. This is a minimal adjustment in hours, but we will do our best to balance things out. And Director Bowie. I wanted to ask um, Kim another question, and that had to do with, um, we haven't really talked about optimal number of hours for libraries total. We're now looking at going from 310 to 368. And um, I guess my question is, what do you see as the optimal number of hours? That, I'm not talking about where we would put them necessarily, but what would be the optimal number of hours for the library system as it operates now? I think we need to, to do an analysis of that. I don't think we should assume that the pre-closure hours were the I mean, they were optimum at that time, but it's eight years later. I think we need to do an analysis. We need to look at the system, the library system as it is, and see how things have changed. And so I really, I really couldn't say right now what the optimal number would be. Okay. To follow up on that, do you see any library going down? Um, one of the things that I, we, we talk about stability, and that was one of our major issues in the election, was stability. And I want to make sure that that is the case, that we maintain stability. So if we, which is really why we approved the enhanced hours that had been enhanced by the communities. And I thought we'd answer that many times myself. But, um, so, so do you see any way that we would go back and cut some hours that we're talking about today. I mean, I hate to ask that question, but we've got to be practical about the fact that, for example, Butte Falls, uh, based on some good work that, that uh, Jill gave me last night, Butte Falls checks out 10 books per hour right now. And we're gonna increase their hours. I guess that's based on faith that they're going to really do some building because I know that you have a relatively new librarian there. Mm -hmm. But those are the <coughs> kinds of concerns that I have is that I don't want to have to go backwards long in the future. So that's my question to you is do you perceive that you might do any cutting to the hours that we're looking at today? Well again I don't think I can make that determination today. I think we need to <laughs> to try some different methods in Butte Falls. Just perhaps there's some need that we're not meeting in Butte Falls. So I think we need to 
to take a look again at, at all the branches. And I would think that if we got to a point where we thought we wanted to reduce, we would bring that to the board and we would have a discussion about that. But right now, I mean, personally, I would not want to reduce the hours in any branches. Okay. And you would not propose that unless there was some unusual thing that comes up in your plan? I definitely would have a good reason if I came to the board with something like that. Yeah. Director Wahey, um, I'd like to emphasize that when, um, in the near future, when we look at the entire system as a whole as part of the revised strategic plan, that we will be looking at more than just circulation. Uh, that is just but one measure of our very busy libraries. Um, their at end of year statistical reports show a dozen measures or more um, to, to indicate level of activity, busyness, use. And so when we're looking at the bigger picture, I hope we're going to be looking at some of these other factors which we really need to take into consideration. Um, related to that, there are questions such as check circulation into a library versus circulation out of a library. And, and that's a very different use pattern. For example, um, people who, who live in a certain location may be putting everything on hold, picking up there, but returning somewhere else on their way to or from work. Um, so it, it's circulation only is not um, a measure that should be used to determine budgets going forward, I don't think, or hours going forward. And the other important point tied to that <coughs> for everybody's um, benefit is I want to reemphasize we are just looking at these additional hours at these libraries for the second half of this fiscal year. After that, everything's on the drawing board again. This does not mean that this number of hours would go forward for each of these particular libraries. It could be changed next year, following years. So this is a sort of a quicker, short-term <laughs> fix that we intend to um, refine as time goes on. I'd like to follow up on Director Wahey's comments. We do have, especially in the smaller communities, we have use of the libraries, Wi-Fi use, internet use, and, and it's true, those folks may not be checking out books. They come in to use the library to read magazines or to use the internet or, or to come to a program. They may not check out books. They also use the libraries, especially in those small communities, for Wi-Fi. In fact, Prospect has a table in it with a cover that the friends um, put in because people are always sitting at the library when the library is closed using the library's Wi-Fi. They are not circulating books. So there are many other measures that we can use to determine library use. Officer Cody? I'm not at all. Director. <laughs> Director. Um, I wanted to talk just briefly about my discovery about how many libraries are really the servants' largest family population. At least four that I'm aware of. And they might have to probably things I missed out on. But um, that involves nearly always weekends or evenings in terms of their ability to use. Because they usually get off at work three, three o'clock or something like that. So uh, um, do you think that, uh, that this proposal sort of takes into account those needs? I would have to look at those specific libraries. For example, in White City, we do have Saturday hours. They have a large Hispanic population, and the, the hours are well used. <coughs> um, I really can't say what we'll do at each library at this point. But we will consider that. I just don't think we can meet the needs of everybody in the community right now with this proposal. Director Smith. Um, having missed a meeting here 
that uh, I know this was discussed at. I probably got some questions that are redundant and I'm not going to raise them. Um, I'm looking at this as a good start. Um, it's moving us in a direction that I think the community as a whole, both the individual smaller communities as well as the whole county, wants to see us move in. Um, I think for us to move much faster at this point puts us at risk of having to do, as uh, Carol suggested, might have to go back and pull back. But I think that this is a reasonable start. It's certainly not where I feel like we're going to end up. Um, and as um, Monica said, we have a lot of other things to consider besides just the hours that could, you know, that would not be reflected in the price of the additional hours, um, programming, um, outreach, these sorts of things um, that I know are out there. And so I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, as we move forward into developing our first year program, that there's going to be a lot of other considerations that are going to go into what makes the library system the most relevant it can be to the community and to its needs. Um, we've been for a very long time constrained by a budget that really wasn't sufficient to meet those needs. We probably <coughs> didn't do the job we should have to explore all those needs. We've now got the opportunity to do that and I think that's where um, we're going to see more things coming up down the road. Um, I do like this proposal. I, I, like I say, I know it's not ideal, but I think that it's a good place to start. It gives us, it's moving us down the path that I think the voting population sent us. Um, and it also gives us an opportunity to become something in the community that we really have not perhaps been up till now, but really should be. So. Well, I went back and looked at a couple different options myself, but, you know, and did some scenarios and looked at different things. And um, what I don't have is the professional expertise that Kim and her staff have in putting together this proposal. And um, most of the times when I'd ask her a question of why she put those hours at a particular branch, Kim was able to come back to me and say, well, I did it for this reason, and I'm thinking of this, which hasn't gone into all of our discussions here. And um, I, I think I had talked to her and talked about Applegate, and she then later has come back and said, oh, I think it might be a little bit better if it's at Jacksonville versus Applegate. So I think staff has been responsive. I think this proposal is much better than the proposal we looked at, and I can support it. In that case, and it seems that we've heard from all, then I would make a motion to adopt this October 2nd proposal from LSSI. Well, oh, oh, actually, this is, we want to hear public first. Is that what we want to do? No. no. It with regard to the hours. In dollars. In dollars. Rather than, it, my concern is that it would be interpreted as kind of like, adopting this document by reference and it's got some Here. information. I, I, I see. Okay. And um, so it's the mm -hmm. I think that the proposal I think we're adopting the proposed additional hours with an approximate cost of two hundred and eighty four thousand seven seventy one. Yeah I second. Yeah. <coughs> moved and seconded. <laughs> yes, it's been moved by Director Wakey and seconded by Director Doty. And may I have a roll call, please? Yes. President Turner? Yes. Vice President Wehe? Yes. Director Doty? Yes. Director Kiefer? Yes. Director Swift? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we have before us a resolution approving the enhanced hours from live LSSI, and the resolution would then need to be changed to have 284000 on, on Section B, it has a dollar amount, so we need to change that to 284771 
So what we're doing is authorizing Jackson County to amend the intergovernmental agreement between Jackson County and the library systems. It's not an intergovernmental agreement. The, the agreement between Jackson County and LSSI is, it, is not an intergovernmental. It's just an agreement. They're not a government. To amend the agreement between Jackson County and Library Systems LSSI and our agreement, well, I guess, a resolution authorizing Jackson County to amend the agreement or agreements between Jackson County and Library Systems and Services Inc. and Jackson County and the Jackson County Library District for library facilities and services to, to include an agreement amendment for the LSSI enhanced hours proposal. So this resolution does two things. We ask the county to, in, to amend the agreement with LSSI, but that also triggers an, an amendment to the agreement between us and the county. Right. Okay? But this is not properly directed. Because it, it, it's not an intergovernmental agreement between Jackson County and the SSI. Correct. The word intergovernmental is incorrect there. I have to change the amount of new Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so may I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. As corrected. Okay, may I have a roll call, please? Vice President Wehe? Aye. Director Doty? Aye. Director Keeper? Yes. Director Swift? Yes. President Turner. <clears throat> yes. Oh, thank you. The second resolution before us is a resolution approving and authorizing the library district board president to execute a joinder to trust agreement for initial member services. That's for us to be a member of our insurance program, SDAO. And uh, so may I have a motion, please? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> the yeah, the insurance was bound in the beginning of, of, of July, but we did need to go through this formality. Okay. So a motion. She moves. And Dodie seconded. Second. All in, uh, may I have a roll call, please? It's a resolution. Yes, you may. Vice President Wehe? Yes. Director Dodie? Aye. Director Kiefer? Yes. Director Swift? Yes. President Turner? Yes. Okay, our next item of business is new business, county public hearings, enterprise boundaries, and, re and renewal energy zones. The county is having a public hearing because they're changing two of their, their enterprise zone boundaries and rural renewable energy zone boundaries. We're notified because we're a public entity that also has property taxes in those areas. And part of those is a property tax exemption for a period of time in hopes that they do something that later on there's a big increase in property taxes in the future. And so we as a taxing entity have the right to go and to talk and to be informed at these at this public hearing, hearings that the county is having. Uh, I don't know what's the board's wish, whether they want to become more informed on this or not, or uh, you have anything you want to say about that? Well, uh, it's really kind of more of a policy, political issue for the board to discuss. Uh huh. That's about all I have to say. Okay. And these things come about from time to time. I know if it was in urban renewal, uh, there's also uh, um, a property tax effect. And, and if there will be a little bit on these, and I don't know the extent of what they're doing, and I don't know how big it is, and... Um, well, they sent us maps. Well, I know, but what kind of value it affects us, oh. yeah. Uh, my, my interest would certainly be, I, I mean, I have solar panels on my house, and I would like to see right. the county do as many energy-saving things as possible. I don't know if there's enough land maybe at the White City Library, if there were enough land that they could actually put some panels in um, adjacent to some of the libraries, I think it'd be a great idea. And and I don't know whether this board would want to send them a letter and say, do what you can 
but it seems to me that we should certainly support the concept of their efforts. The renewable energy. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I would want to, I, I would think that a, a letter from us would be sufficient to convey that. We have those interests where there is space and opportunity to do it. Director Wahey, you were, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, I, it seems to me that this came to us because of the effect, possible effect on property tax and the um, one you know, negative <coughs> scenario, obviously, is that we'll, have, we'll collect reduced property tax because these other entities will get credits. And, um, they get exemption from paying the property taxes, basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. exemptions or it, sometimes it's credit, sometimes it's exemptions. Um, I, I don't think we should comment either way because um, it's not wise to say we're, nor, nor do I want to say we're against renewable energy or, or exploring green energy. But I also don't want to come out as board and say, go right ahead and decrease our property taxes. Um, I think it's, you know, there's pros and cons and it has, it's, it's neutral, it might be important for somebody, at least it's not going to attend, or you know, for somebody to attend so they can <coughs> learn more, but um, I, I don't feel comfortable with just sending a letter saying we're in favor, in favor of renewable energy um, while not knowing at the same time the effect on reduced property taxes, which is our income. There are two. There are two. Mm -hmm. yeah, one of them is an enterprise zone, one of them is renewable energy. Mm -hmm. I think for us to really take a position, we would have to be better informed. Mm -hmm. Better informed of what they think the value may be that we would lose in the short term, and a little better informed of what the value you gain in the long term. I think that, right, I do believe that uh, we're not the experts at this and the people at the county here are working on it would not have made this suggestion if they had not thought that it was better for the community as a whole. That you get more economic development, you get more renewable energy within the valley that uh, makes us more sustainable. So I, I, I think that that part is... Uh, <coughs> What, what little harm it might have on the libraries in the short term may be more than over, uh, may, may be over, made up for maybe even the first year after it happens. Sure, we just don't we know don't that know. and I don't think we're in a position well, to take a position as a board right now on this. May I uh, come there for me? Okay. Um, I feel like I really have to, uh, my comments have to always be unhooked together because we have a lot to say. But I'm not in favor of enterprise zones, and I've been involved in places where they have been approved, a number of places, including within here. But I'm very much in favor of doing renewable energy uh, to the extent that we can. And I want to just, I'll just do a little commentary. I put uh, solar panels on my house in July of 2012. And I have not had to pay for a unit of energy since. Uh, I think that's pretty impressive because I have a very small house, but I also have a very small number of panels as a result of that. But I think that because I live on this planet, which is in trouble, that I would be remiss not to support <coughs> the county's effort for the renewable energy part of this program. So, um, I guess what I could do is uh, move that we prepare a letter in support of the renewable energy part of their effort, and then somebody else can vote against it if that's what they want to do. But I think it's important for us to go on record and support that. But you're only talking about the one and not I'm the other. I'm talking about the one. Also. Do we have any more discussion regarding this? 
Yes. Does somebody intend to go to the hearing then? Well, if that's necessary, if I'm ordered to do that, I, I guess I can do it. I was called, well, I am prepared the line to write a letter. Obtaining information. I, interesting question, if I might, but it, are we subject to the same thing that all five of us may not go to that, or a majority of us may not go because of our board status? Yes. That's still yeah, that in place. Yeah, that public meeting. Right, so only one or two of us can go. And I can't attend that day mm -hmm. because I have commitments to my family, mm -hmm. but I can do a letter. And I would be glad to send his raft around. Okay, the one public hearing is... They're both, the they're both October the 8th. Yes. And, right, I think I saw that earlier, and they're both the same time. So they held one public mm -hmm. hearing versus the other. And it's on the Wednesday. I think I'm telling you for next one. Yes. And I've got another commitment to it, so I can go. So what's the board's wish? That we don't necessarily attend, that we do write a letter in support of the one and just don't comment on the other? I think that would be the wisest course of action for them to do that. And then if somebody can attend, perhaps it would be wise to have one of us there. Okay, uh, do we want to vote? Is there any more discussion on this? And Carol, are you okay with writing the letter? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll send a draft around everyone before it goes on. Okay, would we like to have a vote on this? Can we have roll call, please? President Turner? Yes. Vice President Wehe? Yes. Director Doty? Yes. Director Kiefer? Yes. Director Swift? Yes. So we've taken care of 7.1. 7.2 was to discuss the frequency of meetings, meeting frequency whether we should be setting a second meeting each month as a regular <coughs> stated date, or whether we want to, um, and that goes with uh, what I thought would be our next item on our agenda, which would be to have a, a day um, uh, planning and scheduling and trying uh, goal setting of where we expect to be a little bit of spending some time long term, but a little bit on where do we expect to be in three months, six months, nine months. Nine months is a big date for this. And, uh, you know, a year from now. So I'd like to do a little bit of that type of training, but I've also noticed that we've been having at least two meetings a month, and should we just set aside another day? And as much as we all sort of hate to because you want to have a freer schedule, maybe it's important to, that we do that. And important for Mark so he knows on his planning as well. And so I just want to have some discussion around that. And if we set a second date, what, what time would that be? Well, I think you, you brought up important issues, and I think we need to address both some planning time as well as some uh, an additional meeting, and we had uh, input from uh, a letter to us asking us to consider the evening meeting, and I think that that's also what I've heard here from at least one person. Um, and so I'm open to doing that. Um, I already have two evenings a week filled, but I'm willing to if we could arrange an evening meeting one of those other days, and I'd be glad to do it. And I think we should schedule the planning session as soon as we can. Mm. Oh, I know, I know, yeah. Director Lake. Um, regarding evening meetings, I have um, a lot of experience in the past about this. Um, when I was a library director elsewhere of the 19 library system, and 
experience with us changing times, the county changing times, the city changing times, uh, in order to allow people to attend meetings after work. What really happened is that people did not attend meetings after work. There were far, far, far fewer numbers. The media didn't come. There, there wasn't adequate coverage. Um, and there was no benefit. The only positive, I guess, was that the county, the library district, the cities could say, we tried. <laughs> but uh, it never resulted in an increase. And if you look at the rest of county government, you, you're not seeing nighttime meetings except for um, hearings. Except for yeah, hearings or you know something like to gather information for a strategic plan. I can certainly see doing that, going out to the communities, to each of the libraries when, when we're trying to gather information like that. Other, otherwise, we have um, methods by which we can receive the input um, at, at a, you know, from any time from somebody. So I, in my experience, even meetings are not the answer. And um, they could also can cost more due to staffing issues. You've got to revise schedules, pay overtime. Uh, so I, I don't think that's the way to get more input. You know, I think we can encourage input in other ways and have, again, evening meetings when we need wider type of input. Um, that doesn't mean you know, I wouldn't be willing to try it once and be proven wrong, but that's my experience. Director Swift. Um, I think if we look at the two largest models we have, which is Jackson County Commissioners, their meetings are at 9.30 on Wednesdays. That's pretty much it. Uh, the city of Medford, due to the fact that they're a completely volunteer organization and many of their members are employed, meets at noon regularly and occasionally will hold a 7 o'clock meeting if of the amount of business warrants that frequently their 7 o'clock meetings are canceled. Um, even their study sessions are held at noon, so it accommodates the people who work. Um, I was thinking about this this morning for some reason, that um, noontime is a better time for people who work, and I'm a little bit concerned about the, um, the fact that if we get stuck on our 9 o'clock meeting time, that we're precluding people from even running for the board because mm -hmm. it's not a time that's conducive for somebody who's employed full time. Mm -hmm. So if we go to a second meeting, I, I'm kind of in the same spot where um, Vice President Wakey is. I'm not sure the evening meeting works unless it's an issue. Um, certainly for an issue, I have seen 100 people come out. Mm -hmm. But for a standard meeting, not at night. Um, and so, but I would say that if we were going to go to a second meeting, I'd like to see it at noon time. I think that might be a better time to try and hold the meeting. I agree. I had those thoughts as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, and if you could go to the, probably the third largest government is Ashland, which is every time in the evening. And they, I mean, it's not unusual to have 90 people show up. But if that's Ashland, and but they always have evening meetings, but um, occasionally they do have a daytime study session. Well, my experience, and I've been on many boards and had many meetings, but the people who attend the meetings are generally the people who have an issue before the, the, the board and come forth the group. And then you can fill the group. Uh, but if they don't have an issue, they don't come. So um, certainly when we want to do the, take the plan out, for example, or get ideas for the plan, I think that we could have holders meetings in whatever is a convenient time where we go. But I would certainly concur with the new meeting being the direction. And would we want to have the new meeting for both meetings? I think having consistency in time of when you start is very mm -hmm. important. It's, oh, I guess it's a, you know, it's like the library hours. Is it open today or is it not? <laughs> I, would, I would agree generally, but we're, we're talking about something different here. We're not talking about a regularly scheduled board meetings unless we're talking about changing that. We're talking about adding a, a second meeting for, in the short term, not, not as a permanent thing. I don't think this board, 
unlike other boards, it's going to go to two meetings a month instead of one meeting a month in perpetuity. We're talking about in the short term, correct? Well, you know, we've now had, I think this is our, we had three meetings in August, and two meetings in September, and two meetings in July. And I just think that uh, maybe for the next nine months, mm -hmm. I see this meeting two meetings a month. There were, there were a couple of things that we didn't put on this meeting because we thought it might get too long. And I just think there are a lot of issues coming up that are going to be fast and furious. I just want to, and maybe what we do is just personally reserve a date so that we know when it will be mm -hmm. and we then will decide whether we have that meeting at the previous meeting. Yeah. The benefit to have meetings, meetings at two different times is getting different people there and <coughs> and being able to determine then what is the better time going forward in the future. Yeah. Okay. We also are going to be having budget hearings and budget meetings very soon actually probably Jan starting in January. That involves all of us, plus five additional people from the community. So we need to, I, I like the concept of having a second meeting through this year, through this fiscal year. Um, but, but realistically, we're gonna be in meetings probably three or four times a week uh, when we start doing the budget. And uh, that's a lot, that's a lot, a lot of business to take care of. So. Should, we, do we want to think about this a little bit more and sort of gel around the plan? Do we want to have, uh, I know that there are some people who have, have traveled and they, do you want to have a meeting like the, you know, we have a meeting the first Thursday of the month. Do we want the next meeting? I know the second Thursday of the th month does not work for Kim because she's on the parking commission, for, which is a very important issue for, for this area. And that's, and the, that's the morning. Uh, that's the morning hours, but maybe she could have a noon meeting. Noon would be fine. A noon on the second Thursday of the month. It doesn't work for me this month. Well, so, but let me just say that the thing that's nice about that are both meetings are within a week of each other. The thing that's bad about that, they're both within a week, week of, of each, each other. other. Right. The good thing about it is if you're planning to be away with your family, then you could be gone and not miss an activity. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think we need to but spend... That would, sorry, but that, wouldn't that mean you couldn't go the first half of the month? I I can't every month. I can't go the first half of the month right now anyway, so. Yeah, it, it does mean that you probably wouldn't go the first half of the month. You would probably wait until the, but otherwise if you're gone for two weeks, you're apt to miss one of the meetings. I don't know if that, that's just a, that's just a side from a personal point of view. So do we want to put that back? Do you want to maybe someone do a proposal and we put it on the next agenda as a full proposal of, as to when we'll meet it as the second time? Or are we close enough here to coming to consensus? Well, based on what you know and Lisa knows, do we need to have a second meeting in October? And, and I've, I sent you the full calendar last night. I, I, I copied the calendar for you so you have. I did it through December, mid December. Right, and and some are not showing up on some calendars, so we still have some calendar during the problems, Lisa, to let you know. I can help with this. Okay. Um, okay. I brought you the calendar that was complete. This right, but I can tell you if I print it out on mine, it wouldn't print out the I same. I understand what you yeah. Okay, so it was. It's not complete, so we do have some problems. Okay. So it. Question. Okay. Um, Question and point. Okay. Yes. Point and question. Um, I think we do want to schedule another meeting in October, and we may want to, at that meeting, firm up what will be the regular time for second meetings. And we will have more information there. Um, but if we make this next meeting just be a week from today, is that going to be enough time for you and I and others to gather? the planning information that we hope together to be able to talk 
about planning at the next meeting? Well, I I would. You know, I'm asking this is when we can have time. Well, I think a week from today, which is Thursday, Kim is not available. Okay. Okay. And so, so, so for this month only, we might want to go further out. Right. So what I what I'm hoping that our second meeting for this month would be would be the team planning meeting that would be facilitated and it could be goal setting or team planning or whatever because I think we have some things that we could meet on but none of them have to be done in October mm -hmm. to meet a particular deadline so I think most of our business type for this month can, could wait until the first week in November for me the biggest item is some planning and goal setting and what can we do around mm -hmm. putting together our sort of work agenda for the next three months, six months, nine months, yeah. and, and a year. Great. That's I think that thought. would be wonderful. Do we I have any so three days in October? Or we, we can pick a date for that based on the calendar. Well, what I, I can November. tell on the calendar, but let me just say, it says what Carol is available. I mean unavailable. It says Monica Fridays, but it has no input from uh, Marine, or does it have Kim's full time that she's going to be gone? I put mine on. Yeah, but it, this one isn't showing up either. Maybe so, she's available in October. So see, our you know, calendaring is not working yeah, well. Look, I, I think I know what there's a there's a little box on a certain page that you have to select in order to make your calendar show up to everybody else. Even though you can see your own own oh. calendar and you can see other people's, if you don't go into the certain place yeah. in settings, calendar, and mark this tiny little box, it won't show to the rest of us. And I can show people where to do that. Oh, or Lisa can, yeah. she knows obviously. There are, yeah, there's <laughs> two calendars on the Google Calendar. One is the one that is created automatically when you set up the account. So you can't do anything with that one. It won't let me delete. I could, so I could actually just move everything and have the one, and then there won't be an issue. Well, I think if they still have to, under under settings, yes. and then under the calendar, under there's, yes. there's still a box each person has to check after they're logged in. Right. Yeah. If there's only one box and you don't see anything, then you know you have to check one box and find yeah. it. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. I think if you and I show them what to check, we'll all be able to see each other. Well, mine isn't coming through either, so. It is on the, I see you. Okay, well, earlier, but not I see, later. I see uh, you yeah. <laughs> so, so we're having some problems coming okay. up with the time. So can we just talk for a quick minute and everyone look at their personal yeah. schedule and say, it's either the day, it looks like here, the 20th or 27th of October. October. Yeah. 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 October. On the 27th. I have an appointment at 3. I need to leave about 2.30. Otherwise, I'm open from the 20th. I don't know. So the 27th would have to be only up until 2.30, which leaves a lot of time. <laughs> well, the 27th, it sounds like it's open for you. I don't have anything until evening uh, on Monday. So maybe the 27th is our day. I'm going to go to this. Kim? I'm available. Um, the 20th and the 27th after 10 a.m. on the 27th. And how about Susan? I'm available either of those days. That's something. That is something. I think we should pick one of them and get, on it. get started. Get started. So do we want it to be the 20th then? Is that, I can hear some people the 27th until 2.30 and the 27th after 10, so that makes 20th the best day. Let me check my own schedule. Or at least 10 to 2.30 not enough time for planning. It's not. No, we don't want to hold back. I don't think anything can do with those days. It's wonderful. I just have Corral on the My calendar says I'm gone, but I'm going to be here. So let's do it on the 20th then. Okay. What time? Uh, well, we, the time and place will be determined and this will be, a, uh, we'll work on goal setting session and cal and figure out sort of a schedule of where, you know, where do we want the libraries to be big picture? And then how do you get there? What are the steps we have to take 
administratively and library wise and, and um, you know someone said well this is where we're going to be with with uh, the steps with LSSI until June 30th yeah. and someone says oh no me and then maybe someone else is saying oh I think this is a we need to have a year at this level and then evaluate it so I think there's probably different ways in which to look at those kind of things and I think we need to um, do some planning. Do we need a guide? Yes, absolutely. It needs to be facilitated. Well, I recommended to you Janet Shoulder, but I don't know who else people would want to recommend. And, and Monica has going to be doing some re research on some people. So since Monica's the vice president and I, why don't, why don't we, um, when, when she gets her research done and we'll look at that and then maybe we'll talk with each one of them or do a Skype and try to get who can come on the 20th to do the work. Okay. I think we're also happy to take other recommendations. Yes, that. anyone that you know that might do facilitated goal setting work, please do. Yeah. To. I said her name. Yeah. Okay. So we're reserving yeah. that day and should we plan on 9 to whatever? Um, maybe 8.30 to whenever. 8.30 to whenever. Oh, 8.30 to 3. Oh, I mean, three or four. Okay, so that's the time schedule. It's helpful to kind of have that in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Long day, but I think we'll get a lot of work out of it. Yeah, I think it's really we need important. to do it. I do, do. I do too. Yeah. The 20th, October 20th. Okay, let's see where we are. Let's see the reports. We have some reports. Right. Yes, and yeah. it will be a public meeting. And because what we're doing is doing goal setting, and that is deliberating. Um, or an acquiring information and make, and maybe doing prioritization of what that information is. Yeah. And okay. envisioning some calendaring. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Uh, future agenda. I think the future agenda, Lisa is uh, going to be talking with us probably at the next meeting a little bit about the capital improvement projects for this year that were in the budget. Specifically, the area around the Friends coffee shop in this and the big doors in here. Not a coffee shop. Okay. I mean, it's a former bookstore. bookstore. <laughs> Commonly, <laughs> <Comment, laughs> the it was, coffee it shop. Wasn't. It was. The bookstore area and the um, doors that are not working, and they, the county has uh, has an architect that's bringing back a couple of plans and how we may or may not want to address that issue. Okay. That should be put on the next agenda, as well as maybe round one of policies, sure. governing policies, should be put on that agenda. Yeah, and those are November. the two benefits, yes. Mm -hmm. and this is November. Does, does anyone Six. else have anything they think November should come before the board at that time? We yes. may want to just have a little follow-up of our planning session. Yes, that would be great. Put that on the agenda. Right. I'm sorry, what was that? The follow, sort of follow-up for the planning meeting that we're going to have. And did generally you adopt the plan. Mm -hmm. And we may be ready to do that. Okay. And Jill, mm -hmm. um, Bob Windrow and possibly Ron Beverly will be available from LSSI to come up to the next meeting if you would like an overview of the LSSI. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. And they will be open to questions and so on. Mm -hmm. okay. It would mainly be about the company in general, not specifically, you know, operations of Jackson County. Mm -hmm. but we wouldn't be we wouldn't be starting to talk about the contract, but we would get get an overview. Okay. Yes. And a little bit of what LSSI services are, what we're using, what is, you know, what's available what, to us. And what things they don't do. Uh, are there any other future agenda or future planning items? 
Um, would it be timely to talk about, um, and maybe Lisa already has this, but would it be timely to talk about getting a, um, an application for people who want to serve on the budget committee? Because we're going to be into the holidays and then people don't respond to things. So that's why I thought maybe we should approve something at our next meeting that she could, we could have available to the public that's interested and then we would be able to collect them. I think we need, just need to direct her and we could, I don't think it's a document that necessarily needs to be approved by us. Okay. Okay. But I do think that we would like to have people apply in November and December and decide in January who we have to have on the budget. I agree. Okay, thank and you. we need an application process, and then we'll probably need some interview questions made up because if we have 10 people, we need to whittle it down to five. Mm -hmm. okay. uh -huh. I, I do think there are some people that are interested. I have some names already. I have people, people who've contacted me. So. So uh, I think there is some interest to be on our budget committee. Mm -hmm. And once we get the application form, I think it would be great to post it on the website. Yeah. Oh, the application so form. Just yeah. download it, fill it out, and turn it in. Uh -huh. yeah. And if you look, I'm certain the county has a form. Yeah. But if not, you can look at uh, like City of Central Point or City of Ashland or any of those right. cities have yeah. or, or the school districts have. Uh, applications that they use for that. I'll send it out to the board to look at them. Okay. Thank you. Get okay. some feedback. So. Thanks. Yeah. Um. Okay. We're moving down to financial reports. Lisa, do you want to talk about 8.1? Yeah. Okay. Um. So I, I sent to each um, board member a copy of um, two financial reports. One is a little bit more summarized, which you can find on the last page of the more detailed report, which is four pages, two pieces of paper stamped together here. Um, this report I ran yesterday. The county's um, budgeting, or uh, excuse me, the financial uh, software. Everything is not posted yet, so, uh, for September. So when you get a report one month that goes through the prior month, not everything is gonna be posted, but you're gonna have a pretty good idea um, of what's happening and where the, where the, you know, where we are on balances and funds. Um, so the, the report, I guess we can talk about is up in the top right corner is level detail nine and each month I'll be sending you both level detail nine and level detail four unless you prefer just the one level detail nine <laughs> um, at the top left in bold you'll see the account and description We've got a column for revised 14-15 budget, which is what is the actual budget. We have a presented budget, we have the CAO recommended budget, and then we have the budget committee approved, and then every once in a while there's revision, so we'll always pull up that revised. So those are the budgeted numbers for fiscal year 14-15. The next column, year to date 14-15, is what is spent so far. Um, and I sent out a memo kind of giving you a background. I don't have a copy of that. Did you all read that? On the accounting, um, the type of accounting the county uses? Yes. It took me a while to get used to. Mm -hmm. When did you yeah. send that out recently? Yesterday. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when, they'll have a copy if you want to just yeah. read it real quick. So basically, um, it's talking about modified accrual, which means that when things are Pay, they should, when they're, it, you enter a contract and you put that as an encumbrance, yeah. so then that money is taken out of the budget so you don't overspend your budget. But then when it's paid, it moves from an encumbrance into the year-to-date year as an expenditure. And I'm not quite certain mm -hmm. how their revenues work. I'm still not quite sure. Yeah, after we can talk about that for a minute. Yeah, I'm seeing encumbered revenue on here. I.e. property tax. 
Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think we have anything set up there, and I was looking at that yesterday. It, and, so. and that property tax is not a, a, a this is a county report and mm -hmm. not ours. Mm -hmm. not and so our mm -hmm. financial report, if we were to prepare a financial report today, it would say contracts payable, $1,650,000, because that's the net amount mm -hmm. at the end of October that we owe the county. Mm -hmm. And it would say property taxes, and, and that's why it would only have one line item. So this is giving the county report, which we really can't approve because it's their report to approve, not ours. Mm -hmm. But it's ours for informational purposes. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Uh -huh. That's helpful. Um, so I guess since I we're talking about this now, and am saying to be useful to us and nothing about necessarily modifying this, this report, but you can take it, dump it into Excel, for example, mm -hmm. um, create an encumbered or anticipated revenue column to make it be more meaningful because otherwise we're just working with totally negative numbers with the girls and the whole it's hard to um, realistically compare your right but this is this one right here is the, I the there That's what she's it. saying is she wants to have a separate report which would be the board report at yes. a later time yeah. 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 additional yeah. 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 yes that would be helpful. meaningful yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah, these are, I can export this into Excel and help out with that report. Not a problem. Great, thanks. Yeah. Um, if you look on the second page, well, listed, uh, everything's under library administration. I do have things separated out by library if you want to pull information mm -hmm. separate to libraries, but this is the whole system, the system as a whole. Um, any numbers beginning with four is going to be the revenue. You've got uh, regular revenues that are assigned to the library at the top. Uh, second, you have grants, gifts, allocations, and donations. And then uh, at 45, you've got fees and other service charges. Or that's the total, pardon me. Um, Yes. Let me ask questions as we go along. Yep. Yes, go for it. Um, so under donations, dot 2100, um, it looks like the, the three lower level ones roll up to the dot 2500, is that right? So the Friends Donations, Foundation Donations, and General, well, no, just Friends and Foundation just roll up. And so the difference, well, let me explain first. I, this year, mm -hmm. just created the library from friends donation revenue line, mm -hmm. the foundation donations revenue line. I also have two expense lines um, to match that, to better track mm -hmm. donations coming in mm -hmm. and payments. So those should equal out. So those are added just after the budget was prepared. So that's why you don't see anything in that revised 1450. But yes, those would be those do roll up into the budgeted three hundred and eighty nine thousand three hundred and eighty dollars. Okay. And so, so so my related question is then there's from those two entities we expect to realize that full amount. Not necessarily the full amount. We've so got are there any other donations rolling into that? I guess is what I'm asking. Or is it just from those two entities? Pretty well, we've got the um, Holbert donation rolls into that. And I I also sent out the gift funds. Uh -huh. So we'll talk about that. So some of those, so those are in there as well. Okay, that's what I'm asking. What yes. else is in there? Yeah. Yes, yeah. not just those. So um, it also includes, can you tell us what else it includes in, in here? Um, or does it include everything in, in here? Not necessarily everything. The And so maybe what the best thing would be is if you give us a year to date, very detailed, and it has just something yeah, we can look through it, and yeah. answer some of our questions mm -hmm. on it. What we're seeing is it rolled up and you want to see what actually goes in there. Right. And obviously at this point, not much has gone in there. It's only a 0.79%, so. Right, but in the revised budget number for donations, what all did that include? Yeah, I, I can print out a detailed report. 
Off the top of my head, I know the Hulbert request, which is around 125,000 a year, uh -huh. is in there. Okay. Um, we do have an amount in there that's larger for a friend's donation, um, depending on how what the the bid for the friend shop comes back um, on anything they would uh, donate to over and above um, the Carnahan Trust money that we have, which is what we were going to use. So that number is rather large for this year, just for that reason. Okay. Um, but a more detailed report I can print out that gives you line by line item, and I can actually um, export it into Excel. It'll be easier for you. Good. But it lists everything. Right. So this, these are just summary reports, and unless the board directs me otherwise, I'll just pull these. Uh, summary reports, but I'm more than happy to send out detail to anybody who wants to know. Just shoot me an email. I think, well, I, I, think, think I think what we need to do is when a month is closed, we realize that September is not closed, but maybe by the 20th of October, you give us the detailed year to date and do it electronically and drop it into Excel. So if we do have a question, those people who are analytical can, yeah. can, can, can can look at the detail and just put that on to do about the 20th of every month for us. Of the, and always have it year to date because sometimes you ask something and it gets corrected and, and uh, um, pretty soon that file will be huge by the end of the year. But we'll see how the transactions are starting to look up at, by that particular time. And if you just email that, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I can do that. I, my only concern is if you have detailed questions about something I guess I can print myself a detailed report, but okay. um, <laughs> so I, off the top of my head, I, I rely on these reports. I have to okay. look at them. If, I, if you need answers, you have to so um, we can talk about And that. I hope that we look at the general and then ask the detailed reports to her and try to get our answers, our questions right. and answers. That would be helpful. Because generally what happens is that there's a re financial report, and then it tells what's going well, what's go not going well uh -huh. from a financial point of view, answers two questions. How are we doing financially or economically? And how are we doing with our budget? Are we within our budget or not? And those are the two things that we need to have an overview from. And then talk about a detailed area once in a while. For example, next time you'll be talking about capital outlay. So those are the two basic questions that I, I'm concerned with. If I look at this financial report, we're a third of the year in, the expenditures are $1.8 million and the revenue is $181,000 at this point, so it's $1,650,000, which is right at $550,000 a year, which is right where my estimate when we started this and looked at the county would be, so I think we're tracking fairly close to what we expected. The other thing is if I looked at page four, after they have encumbered the LSSI bill, which means they've set money aside that that money is designated, they have about $1.1 million worth of expenses that had not been designated. And those are things like the capital outlay project and um, utility bills that aren't encumbered. So uh, um, pretty much where I would expect it to be at this particular time. And so I think, and so is there anything more that you want to say about the financial report, Lisa? No, I don't. I, I, I can answer general questions about the format. Um, if you do want some more detail, I'll put that in the spreadsheet and, and send that out. This yeah. is generally mm -hmm. sufficient for me. And I would be happy to receive it by my in my computer. And maybe you want to give us occasionally or quarterly or something, give us a, a handout here. Or okay. It saves paper. Okay, library director report. Do we want to move to the library director report? Sure. Did you want to um, go over the gift funds? Oh yes, yeah. I want you to go over the gift funds. That's important information. 
So it printed out just a summary page, just to some highlighted green and yellow. Um, and then I printed out things from the county financial system project summary reports um, that kind of give a little bit more detail, but not much. I think for today's purpose, the cover sheet is going to be sufficient. So far, we've received only one of the gift donations that um, we received yearly, and that's the Carpenter Foundation uh, donation we get every year is about three thousand um, dollars. That's not special. Is that specially designated? I didn't that's that material. Here. Just for materials. materials yeah. in certain subject areas. Uh, starting at the top, 1370 is just my code, so if you look at a detailed report and you see that number under a sub-ledger, you'll know that it's related to the Ted Gerlach gift fund. Uh, current balance right now is, um, to spend, is $1,161. And how, how much, oh, never mind. Okay. It's, it's an interest-bearing account on a $1,500 corpus. Uh, and it's to be spent on material subjects of small woodlands. Are you having trouble spending yes. that? Yeah. <laughs> we have trouble spending this because it's so narrow, the topic. Um, Are I'm we going to go back to Yes. This? I'm curious, um, or have a suggestion if you don't know about it. Um, and I'm a member of the Oregon Small Woodlands Association, and we have a um, big combined chapter Jackson County, mm -hmm. which is active. I wonder if anybody's reached out to them and asked them what they might need. I'm not sure I can talk to our selector and what is the organization? Small I Woodland? Give you the the Send contact me details. The it's um, Oregon Small Woodlands Association. Okay. And it's Jackson Josephine. Uh, and I was going to suggest Marty Mead. Right. Uh, uh, I think he would be very an excellent resource person for What's his name? Marty Mead. Uh -huh. I think I have this uh, contact information at my house. So if both of you guys can send that, this, that, that, yeah. that on. So what about the E.J. Smith? E.J. E. Smith, interest, another interest bearing account on an uh, $8,500 corpus. There's $287 in there from last year, so we haven't received this year's donation. Mm -hmm. um, or excuse me, no, it's an interest bearing account. That's just carryover from last year. Current account expendable trust balance right now is at $84,706 because we've held on to this a couple of years anticipating the district um, formation and campaign. Primarily we were talking about doing some capital projects but didn't want to um, give the public the perception that you know we're running out of money yet we're doing building improvements when this is, uh, you know, a dedicated fund. Uh, fund. Is it? Um, yeah, I had a question. Is this dedicated for facility only as, as opposed to materials Just Medford, or anything else? No. Is it facility? It's capital? Medford Library only. But there's no restriction on that? There's no library. restriction on that. But mm -hmm. at uh, the time we were talking about the Carnahan when we received it, we are talking about a, a few different options. Mm -hmm. um, and this year, part of it's going to go to possibly, we're not quite sure we put it in there, to replace these tables in the Medford uh, community meeting rooms because they're really heavy, really mm -hmm. hard to take down. Mm -hmm. um, and then the rest for the uh, garage doors and bookshop project. And that's something we'll be looking at in the future, what the yes. actual spending is. Right. Now, see, you realize these are monies that are not property taxes that are sitting on hand at the county, yes, that we that. do get to direct how they're mm -hmm. thing. Yes. So if it's a carryover of a restricted fund, it is an additional resource for us. Yeah. Okay. Over. And that's one, one reason it's important to know what's in this donation slide. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Holber request, we have $84,000, uh, almost $85,000 left from last year. Um, it's an interest-bearing account returning an average of about 125000 yearly. Um, it's dedicated to 50% ages 6 to 16, 
and 50% towards mature readers for reference and research. Um, we receive the check every year in December. Um, it's a very useful fund for Kim and the library. And we use it for our adult computer classes, patron technical support on uh, workshops, on downloadable books and technology. We use it for book talking for the 6 to 16. We go into the schools and various other projects. Mm -hmm. Carpenter Foundation, we get that every year. We receive that check for $3,000. I think I said that already, it's for materials. Um, the Eunice Gray, we have $967 um, carryover from 1314. And we receive a, a, an average of $4,000 yearly and it's to purchase large print books. Mm -hmm. And when I do print out detailed reports, these codes right here, 2663, 2630, 2575, you'll see those on the report under the donations, so you'll know exactly what that donation total mm -hmm. entails. Will the report have the name to go with it or some abbreviation? <laughs> yes. All those. Great. And the project summary reports that I included, I can print those up project to date um, to give you an idea. Kim and I typically use that for balances. How much is left to spend on large print books? How much do we have left for um, computer classes this year? Those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Send that electronically too. Yep. I can Excel. send anything in Excel. Excel. <laughs> yes. Not just PDF. Yes. Okay. Any, any report in our system can be exported to okay. Excel. I have another question. Under uh, revenues, the 99000 for government agency rental, mm -hmm. is that government agencies renting meeting rooms at all the libraries, or what, what is it? That's um, RCC. Oh. Pays, uh, rent to the county because of the shared space upstairs. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's there's the government agency. Mm -hmm. okay. And that has been built, that's the full year amount, not just the portion of the year. Thank you. Library director report. Okay, so um, I love this part of the meeting. We get to actually talk about what we're doing out there. Um, so uh, this month I've highlighted the summer reading program. We received all the statistics. We had 400 or 4,973 participating children and teens in the program. Uh, over, well, 160 events and activities and we had almost 5,000 attending those 4,824. It was a science program, and so we had a lot of interest in the programs that we did have. 598 of the children that are counted in that statistic are in daycare centers. They may have come to the library, but um, many of them did not. So we did serve those daycares with summer reading. We also had a spring into summer reading program for 477 children that were participating in Head Starts and things like that. So we, we got them ready for the summer because they don't meet during the summer. And so we, we, had, we served kids in the library, we served kids in child care and Head Starts. And the reason that we do summer reading again is to prevent that summer slide so that the kids don't lose their skills during the summer and so that they go back to school hopefully with the same or increased skills that they had when they left school. Um, and just a little more information about summer reading. It, I attached this two-page summer reading brief and that gives some additional information, some photos, and some quotes about summer reading in general. So it was a good year. 
The, the, one of the things that's coming up is the Road Valley um, Business Resource Fair that is held at the HEC every year. We do that. We do a booth there and we talk to the attendees about business resources that we have at the library, which include materials, databases, and then we just give general information about some our website and other, just whatever they need to know. And these. These kinds of activities really, uh, I think, are important because we talk to people who may not come to the library, they may not have been here, or they may have come and they don't know that we have these additional services. Mm -hmm. And to follow up on some of the other outreach that we've done, I mentioned that we went to Southern Oregon Antiques and Collectibles last month, the White City Family Fun Day, the Multicultural Fair, and the Ashland Book and Author Festival. Between all those events, we probably saw over 500 people out in the community who may or may not use the library that now know a little bit more about what we do. So I think they're very important events. And then the rest of the report is, is just some other programming that we've done. Um, to follow up on the uh, staffing, we did eight kind of just meet and greet Skype meetings with eight candidates for the assistant director position. From those eight, we will be interviewing via Skype next week, four more, four of those. And then from that, we will um, we'll have a second interview. And then from that, we hope to bring up one or two candidates. So we're moving forward on that. Thank goodness for technology. Yes. We did not have an internal candidate, and we did not have an Oregon candidate so far. So it, it's all been external out of Oregon. Yeah. And will the board have a chance to meet and um, So we'll work and out, the, we'll work out the details when we, um, when we decide who we're bringing up, then we can work out the details about how we want to do that. Um, do you have an ex expected date where that, when that might be? Um, no. Okay. I was just going to mention that several people talked to me at the libraries about how many adults also joined the summer reading program. Yes, we do have an adult summer reading program, which um, has been well received. This year we had 395 adults that it Oh, that I see, were I part see. of that program. I didn't see it. But yes, thanks. yeah. It's we we also have a winter read adult winter reading program, and these programs are just are kind of building momentum, and they're very easy, laid back sorts of programs that they don't take a lot of effort on the staff, but they're very enjoyable for the participants. Yeah. And at the all all these wonderful outreach events that you're doing and. Um, talking with people who may not know about library services, are we usually bringing applications library for library cards or, you know? We do bring applications. We can't, we can't issue cards at that location, at outreach yeah. locations now because our, our Polaris system doesn't do that, but the next upgrade, we should be able to do that if the people have the proper identification. So we do give out applications and all kinds of information about our services. This is a very exciting summer program. Yeah, it really sounds nice. great. Yeah. Any other questions of the library director report? Thank you. Great to hear all this wonderful news. Library supporter report, and this month we don't have one. But what, what, what uh, Lisa and I had been talking about was that at each meeting we would either have the library staff themselves, the foundation, or someone from the friends group come and tell us what's been going on for that quarter. In, I know in the library, for example, she might have the children's librarian and come in. So it's just, just a little bit more for for us and for the public to know the good work that the library has been doing and us to be more familiar with those organizations. So we're going to try to do that. The other thing that I want to request and maybe ask is 
that we put the reports after the consent agenda? Wouldn't that isn't that where normally you're seeing these items and not at the end of the agenda? Because if we're going to ask people to come in and give us a presentation and a small report, a we don't want them to wait through a public hearing exactly. process. Exactly. I mean, we would have had the the public input pr prior to the report, but I would move it prior to the resolutions that's and the public input, the public hearing, yeah, but not the that's public that's input. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we have any other business to come before the board at this time? If not, we stand adjourned.